speaking with my friend who I also know through synagogue. We met one another at shul. Yes. And Jerry, as I refer to him yes, as, as sure. many of our friends refer to him as, is a survivor of the Kinder Transport Project. Right. Tell us when you were born. On September 17th, 1924. That's me with my parents. This, this is the last picture taken of us. A month before the Germans broke my leg. Did you ever play soccer? Yes. Did you wear shin guards? Yes. Yes, well, we didn't have any shin guards and they kicked us in the shins with the heavy jack boots. And that, that's uh, uh, enormously uh, painful. Oh, yeah. Well, when they tired of that, one of these Nazis saw a long ladder lying beside a powerhouse where they made steam for the tannery. And somebody had the idea, they raised the ladder, about 20, 25 feet high, they raised it and against the building, the tannery, the powerhouse, right next to a uh, heap of cobblestones. Some are as old as the Romans, 2,000 years old. And they had a heap of these cobblestones. So they forced us to climb the ladder up to the top and jumped down on the cobblestones. And whoever didn't jump fast enough to their liking, they would shake the ladder and you would fall down and get hurt badly. Now, I don't know how many times I climbed up there and jumped, maybe six, eight times. And the last time I jumped, I felt a bad, bad, horrible pain in my leg and I collapsed. So the man in charge, he motioned to me, like, get lost. I remember at the other end of this huge building, there was a, a, an infirmary. And I crawled on my hands and knees, sort of, and dragged myself along the building. Uh, to a block long, maybe. And I, I crawled up the steps to the second floor, to the infirmary and I passed out. And I, I woke up hours, many hours later in the evening when I heard gunshots. I didn't know what's happening, but Germans were firing guns in the air to chase the people back into the building. And the nurse in the hospital, uh, sort of hospital, infirmary. Your ward, family was there. She cleaned me up and fixed my, my torn clothes. Okay. I must have been a mess. Okay. She washed me in the meantime while I slept, and that's where my mother found me. Can you imagine what she felt like? So your parents were there? They were standing outside. Oh. All day long without food, without anything. And this was the first warm day of the year. Okay. I remember that distinctly. The man in charge, an SS man, oh. they were the worst. Okay. At first, he didn't allow me to be taken to the hospital, the local hospital, because they didn't want the people to know what, what they did to us. Finally, after four or five days, he gave permission. And somehow, I don't know how I did, who, do, who took me, how was, I, don't, I really don't remember that. Somebody transported me to the local hospital, a small hospital. Mm -hmm. a Catholic hospital okay. and the nuns were delightful. They knew exactly what happened. Okay. The whole village knew okay. and they treated me with such love. One day a couple appeared at my bedside. Uh, the man introduced himself. His name was, he said his name was Drucker. Drucker. Uh, the lady's name I don't remember if she told me. And they asked me if I would like to go to England. I must have told them, I cannot decide. You must, you must speak to my parents in the camp. They must have done so, because five weeks later, I was on a train to England. How this happened? Who arranged it? I have no, no idea. Somebody must have done so in, in secret.
Later here in America, I found out there was a man in Czechoslovakia, an Englishman, mm -hmm. called uh, Nard. Hmm. Sorry. He made it his business to save Jewish children. He was in great danger. He worked in secret, but he did. He must have arranged our, our rescue. Other people tried that. They made films about this. People who did not experience it, they weren't there. Mm 